Okay, in this unit we're going to be studying things that rotate. And um, just like in um, studying just linear motion, we started out with kinematics. We're going to start out with kinematics for this as well. So um, rotational kinematics. And the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to just reinforce something you already know, and that is um, the radian. That's the angle that we're, we're not going to um, use degrees as much as we're going to use as much as we're going to use um, radians to, for angles in here. So if that's a, a, a circular object, if you have a circle, rather, and it's got a radius r, and if you start at the edge of that circle, and if you walk one radius around the circle, so that would be like right about there maybe, would you say that distance is equal to this distance? Because if it is, if this distance and this distance are equal, then you've just walked through um, one radian of angle. So that's what a radian is. So if this thing is spinning around, if it, if it goes through one radius every second, then we say that it's going at a rate, it's spinning at a rate of one radian per second. Let me show you that. Here's a circle, and um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get it going, and this is spinning at one radian per second. There you have it. I don't know if you can see the time over here, but the time is actually um, it's taking about 6.28 seconds to go around every time. It's already gone around three times and it's a little over 18 seconds. It's going around a fourth time and we're at about 25 seconds. Okay, so that's one radian per second of angular speed. Well, it turns out then that we are going to, um, we're gonna tell you then that angular speed, we're gonna have, um, that's going to be, we, we can't use V for, for velocity or angular velocity. We're going to use um, some Greek letters. So this is a, a Greek letter omega. It is a vector quantity. It's angular speed or angular velocity rather. If it's a vector quantity, it's angular velocity. Um, there's theta, which is an angular position, and there will be delta theta, which is an angular displacement, Okay, the angular position is measured in radians. Um, so is the angular displacement. And the angular velocity is going to be measured in radians per second. And um, you can count on a few things. Um, angular velocity is equal to not delta x over delta t, but delta theta, the angular displacement, over delta t. Um, the instantaneous angular speed will equal um, d theta dt. Uh, that's just like um, v is equal to delta x over delta t. But V instantaneous, this is average. But V instantaneous is dx dt. Same idea. Okay. Um, now there's also, as you, you probably are going to guess, there's um, angular displacement, or there's angular acceleration as well. So an object can be rotating with a constant angular velocity, 
but it can also um, have an angular acceleration. Let me show you. So here we're back to our circle. I'm going to do something to give this a little bit of an angular acceleration. All right. And let me, I'm going to start it from rest. This time it's going to start from rest and have an angular acceleration. So here we go. So it starts out slow. And you see it is moving, but it's just moving with very low angular speed. But this is actually gaining speed. So every second it's going to be getting faster and faster. When I first started it, it almost didn't look like it was moving at all. But then um, right now it's, it's going at a fairly good clip. Um, but by the time it makes one rotation, it's going to be moving much faster than it did at the very beginning. This has, um, we say this has an angular acceleration then. I'll let you see this for maybe in one more turn. And you'll see that it's getting faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Its angular velocity is going up, 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 up. Now, what's nice about this is that everything that you've already learned about acceleration is contained in angular acceleration except we can't use an A for angular acceleration we use an alpha so alpha is going to be angular acceleration it is a vector quantity I'll tell you about its vector nature in another video um, so um, angular acceleration is average, the average angular acceleration is delta omega over delta t, just like A average was delta V over delta t. Let me get all these vectors in here. Boom, boom, boom. Well, um, instantaneous, oops, instantaneous acceleration, angular acceleration is d omega over dt. Just like A instantaneous was um, dV over dt. It was the derivative of V with respect to time. This is the derivative of omega with respect to time. Okay, well, uh, here's, here's the deal then. All those equations that you've memorized, hopefully, for your quick drill, namely... Um, V final is equal to V initial plus AT. Well, there's a counterpart in rotation. It's omega final equals omega initial plus alpha T. Isn't that nice? So these two, these two go together. This is for rotation. That's for linear motion. Um, how about V final? equals V initial plus, oops, V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta X. Well, that counterpart to that is omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus 2 alpha delta, not X, but theta. And then finally, um, you know how delta x, these guys go together. Delta x in linear motion was vi times t plus one half a t squared. Well, in rotational motion, delta theta is equal to omega initial times t plus one half alpha t squared. So these are the kinematics equations. Now you can only use these, this one, this one, and this one. These you can only use for constant alpha. Just like the other ones. Okay. Okay, we're back here with um, rotational kinematics parts two. And um, so let me um, 
just start out with just a real simple problem. So let's say this thing is going to start to rotate and um, its its initial omega angular speed is zero radians per second. So it's starting from rest. So that's radians per second. And But it has an alpha, an angular acceleration of two radians per second squared. So um, what that means is uh, that every second it is going to either gain or lose two radians per second. So every second it will gain or lose two radians per second of omega. What will be its final angular velocity after one rotation? Okay, well if it's a constant alpha then I can use these equations. And um, the equation that I might want to use is this one. Omega final equals omega initial plus alpha two, uh, I'm sorry, squared squared plus two alpha delta theta. So um, omega initial is zero, so I can get rid of that term. So omega final squared equals two times alpha, which is um, two radians per second squared, times um, delta theta. Now delta theta, it says one rotation. But I have to be in terms of I have to be in terms of radians. So one rotation is two pi radians. Okay, let me write that out here. One one rotation, one revolution is two pi radians. Okay, let's see what happens then. Well, um, I have. 2 times 2 times 2 is at 8 pi. Now what happens to the units? That's going to be 8 pi. And the units are going to be radians. This is in radians. So it's going to be radians squared over second squared. So omega final is the square root of 8 pi radians squared over second squared. See how that works? Okay, well, you know, not all rotational motion has constant acceleration. And so, um, how do you handle it if it's if the acceleration is changing? Well, you need to know um, just how the, it's changing with time. And so, um, let's say we're given that theta is um, 2 radians over seconds to the 4th times t to the 4th. See how if I put in a time there, I just get radians? Because the this will be seconds to the 4th, and that would cancel that seconds to the 4th. Okay, let me find um, the, oh, the angular speed after 1 second. Okay, how fast will it be going after 1 second? Well, the angular speed is just the derivative of theta with respect to time. The derivative of theta is um, 8 radians per second to the fourth times t cubed. So if I put in one second there, it looks like, I'll put it here, omega at one second. It looks like it's 8 radians per second. Every second, at that point, every second it's going 8 radians. Though it's not going to be doing that... Um, except for that one point in time. Okay, how about its acceleration? What's its acceleration at one second? Its angular acceleration. Well, its angular acceleration at one second is just the derivative of omega with respect to time. Um, or you could say it's the second derivative of theta with respect to time. That's the notation that you might use. So um, if you take this, the next derivative of this, you get 24 radians per second to the fourth times um, t squared. So if I put in one second there, I get 24 radians per second squared. That's what alpha is at one second. The angular acceleration at one second. 
Okay, so the calculus is very similar to the calculus of the last of uh, the kinematics unit that we did at the beginning of the year. Okay, I also want to tell you about bridge equations. Bridge equations, um, what they do is they link rotational motion to linear motion. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to want to be able to bounce back and forth between linear and rotational motion. Let me explain why. If this thing is rotating, let's say this is a, a merry-go-round, and let's say you're here on the merry-go-round. Well, you have a certain speed, linear speed, that's related to omega. You have a certain acceleration that is related to alpha. And so um, I want to tell you about those. The, the bridge equations relate the angular speeds to the linear speeds for any object that's on a rotating platform. So here are the bridge equations. The bridge equations um, are these. Uh, you've already had this, I think, in math. This is arc length is equal to r theta. You might have had it as theta is equal to s over r. But that um, is um, one of the bridge equations. So if you, if you um, let's have you go, um, let's have theta be two pi rotations. If theta is 2 pi rotations, do you see that when you do 2 pi times r, you get the arc length of the circumference of a circle? Hey, what if theta is just 1 radian? If you put in 1 radian here and multiply by r, sure enough, you've gone 1 radius. Um, as far as um, if you're moving on a, on a circle, if you um, have an angular velocity of omega, then um, depending on where you are in the circle, you're going to have a, a, a certain tangential speed. If you're right at the center of the circle, so r equals zero for where you're at, then you are going to have no tangential speed. So if you're right here, you'll have no tangential speed. But as you walk out, like here you'll be going faster, and here you'll be going faster still. Here you'll be going the fastest that you can go on the on that platform that's rotating. Okay, so that's just saying that your tangential speed then, that would be this speed, that's tangential speed, that is um, related to omega it, with that equation. Your tangential acceleration um, is also related to alpha. In the same way, do you see the pattern going here? Arc length equals r theta, v tangent equals r omega, a tangent equals r alpha. So those, you're just multiplying the 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 how far you are are from the center of the circle by your by your alpha or your omega or your theta. Okay. Um, one more thing about that though, if you are on a circle that's accelerating. Um, let's say this circle I'm having a hard time drawing circles lately uh, let's say you're out here and it's it, it has an alpha you have an alpha well that means that your your tangential velocity is is not constant your tangential velocity you're getting faster and faster and faster your tangential velocity and and um, so you know you're your tangential acceleration is um, just going to be r times alpha. But you also have um, a centripetal acceleration. And centripetal acceleration is um, v squared over r. But this is v tangent squared over r. And so uh, the centripetal acceleration, if you look at this equation, I'm going to substitute this in for r omega. So that's going to be um, r squared omega squared over r. So the centripetal acceleration is going to be r omega squared. So if you have an alpha and you're out here, you actually have... Um, both a tangential component of your acceleration and a centripetal component that's related to omega and alpha. 
Okay, um, this will be the last part, I promise, for rotational kinematics. So, rotational kinematics part three. Um, that ended quickly, that last one. I don't know if you noticed. So, let me just reiterate that if you um, are traveling in a circle, let's say you're on a merry-go-round, we're looking from a bird's, bird's eye view, and here you are, and let's say you have an alpha, which means that you this thing is gaining more and more omega, well, if you have an, an alpha, then you're going to have, um, you're going to have a tangential acceleration. And you're going to have a centripetal acceleration. Um, because you're going in a circle. And so, um, I, what I'm telling you is this, the total acceleration would be, um, the, tangential acceleration that vector plus the vector centripetal acceleration now you can't just add those those are in different directions but the magnitude of a since these are at right angles always they'll equal um, it will equal the square root of a tangent its magnitude plus the magnitude of a centripetal. So the total acceleration of something that's actually got, um, it's gaining more and more omega. The total acceleration is, um, let's put in the, let's, let's in terms of the, the tangential acceleration will be alpha times r. That's um, this one. But then um, the centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. But if, um, but V squared according to omega, it's omega squared R squared. That's V squared over R. See, V tangent is R omega. So that's why um, we cancel out one of these and one of these. And that's why we can say that the acceleration for something that's going in a circle and that's speeding up, it's actually speeding up in the circle, is going to be just both of those. Alpha R plus um, omega squared R. Okay. Um that's all I wanted to say about that one. This is going to be a short video. So if you wanted to, if, you, if you're a bug, say, on something that's moving around faster and faster, here, it starts, the bug would do this. If you have an alpha, it might start at rest, but then it would go like that, get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And so um, it's got both of those. Okay. That's all I have for you on this one.